Consumers Energy CEO and President Patty Poppy is launching a Love Michigan Clean Energy Tour, and it launches this week right here in Jackson. And Patty Poppy joins us today. Hi, well, Patty. Hello, Bart. Nice to see you. Great to see you again. Actually, I was on uh, the tour with you mm -hmm. earlier today when you visited the future Kristoff and Sons, and that is going to be a show showplace of smart and, and clean energy. Yes, it is. It's a perfect example of all of the things that I'll be talking about on our clean energy plan uh, in one place. You know, Ted and Tom Kristoff have done, they're leaders in the community to begin with, and their commitment to Jackson runs so deep, but now their commitment to the planet and to society by their uh, willingness to really engage in clean energy and reducing uh, their energy waste is uh, something to be modeled by many of us. What I think is interesting is uh, a utility is, is actually leading and not, not following in terms of government regulations and policy. Where, where is it that you as a company decided that you were going to be the ones that had to take the responsibility for what you are calling um, protecting our planet? You know, Climate change is happening. We've done our research, our homework. We recognize that as an energy producer, we have a big impact on that. And we could either leave it better than we found it or just continue doing what we've always done. And so we made a really strong commitment as a team at the company. And then we put the engineers to work and they did a, a really good job figuring out the best and newest combination of energy sources that allows us to eliminate coal as a fuel source, maintain our reliability, and most importantly, also maintain low prices for energy. You know, there used to be um, sort of the sucker's choice of you can have clean energy, but it's going to be expensive. Or you can have the cheap and dirty stuff. Take your pick. That's just not true anymore. We don't have to make that sucker's choice. We can have clean, reliable, and affordable energy. And it's starting right here in Jackson. Well, it started with the company, really. When you look at the beginnings of Consumers Energy, you were at the hydro power company. That's right. Our first high voltage transmission line was powered by the Croton Dam. So uh, hydropower has always been a big part of our energy mix and it will continue to be. We still have 13 uh, hydro plants, but our biggest and most um, significant is our Ludington pump storage plant. It's up in Ludington, Michigan. It's a huge reservoir. It pumps water up from Lake Michigan into the reservoir when there's extra power, usually at night. And then when we need power during the day, those same pumps rotating in reverse generate electricity, the motors that power those pumps. And in fact, those motors up at Ludington are the six largest motors in the world. Each one of them by itself is the largest motor in the world, and we have six of them wow. at 500,000 horsepower each, which is crazy to even think about and we have six of them up there at Ludington and so that works like a great big battery so combined with new renewable energy that we're adding it actually allows us to provide reliable energy resources for Michigan that are carbon free. So you're on this uh, tour you're talking to, to business leaders community leaders about um, clean and renewable energy uh, wh why do we need to know do we have do we have to participate in, in some way? We need some help. Uh, you know, in the um, olden days when we were building these big baseload power plants fueled by coal, um, we could do that by ourselves. You know, we could build the plant and operate them. And I, I say energy, the energy grid of uh, the past looked a lot like I-80 running through Iowa. I don't know if you've ever been on I-80 <laughs> running through <laughs> Iowa, but it's long, straight, couple on ramps, couple off ramps. That's sort of what the grid looks like. Big central station power plants putting on power onto the highway, and then high voltage transmission lines, and then low voltage lines distribute to homes. It's very one way, however. In the future, it's gonna be two way flow and distributed solar around the state. And most importantly, and, for, and people ask me all the time, should I be putting solar panels on my roof to do my part? I'm gonna say we actually don't need more power plants right now. What we need is people to use less energy, particularly on peak summer days. In Michigan, on a hot summer day like today, our electricity demand doubles. And it's literally a few hours a year. And we build the whole system to serve those few hours a year. If we can shave that peak 
by having, and I'm not talking about just everybody being hot and sweating and, and you know, being uncomfortable in their homes. That's not what I'm talking about. There are new technologies that we can use with wirelessly communicating thermostats to pre-cool homes so your air conditioner is not working as hard at 10 a.m. when it's not so hot out. You pre-cool your home and if it's insulated properly, it'll stay cool and then you're not using energy on peak. So that, just that act, combined with all of our other energy efficiency programs, the insulation, the lighting, and the um, really efficient heating and cooling equipment, combined with that thermostat, prevents us having to build three new power plants. We're doing it right here. We have the, we have the smart. Um, yeah, the smart thermostat. thermostat. I saw your Ecobee yeah. thermostat on the wall. Everybody, it's such a simple, small thing. It's cheaper than putting solar panels on your roof. Um, and it do, has a bigger impact and has a bigger impact on reducing carbon and our effect on climate change. And frankly, I, I get people ask me all the time, what can I do? I want to be a part of the change. I want to have a role. This is a simple thing. People can go to www.mycleanenergyplan.com, my being Michigan, mycleanenergyplan.com. If you go to that website, you can sign up to join the movement. We'll plant a tree in your honor. Oh. And you'll get information then about programs that you can sign up for to save the planet, but also, frankly, save your pocketbook. So in Europe, everyone, I've been to Europe in the summer, and, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of air conditioning. That's and, true. And that's really, it, it's, a, it's a continent that it, in the summer, it, it sweats. It does sweat. It's, I, I, was in, I was in Europe on this very, very hot spell they had about a month ago. And uh, I support air conditioning. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get me wrong, it was hot. So I don't want people to think that I'm asking for everyone to do their part to suffer a little bit. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about optimizing our energy usage, engaging, being a smart energy consumer. And a smart energy consumer then doesn't waste energy. You're wasting money when you waste energy. If, if you're not a climate change believer or that's not your thing, that actually doesn't matter because you actually are just wasting money then. So let's save money. And if you care about the planet, if you care about our next generations and, and what kind of environment they're going to live in, and I care deeply about that, we have an opportunity to come together, get smarter, be just as comfortable. Again, this is not a sacrifice plan. This is an optimize our energy system plan. While we're cleaning it up by retiring our coal plants, everyone can do their part. And that's why we call it the Love Michigan Clean Energy Plan, because we love Michigan. And we want Michigan to be the leaders that we have always been in innovating new and exciting things. Well, you're already thinking about the world that um, you're going to leave for your grandchildren, which, by the way, you don't have grandchildren yet. I Patty. know. My, my daughters don't even have boyfriends. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> everything in good time. <laughs> so you're, it really is a long range. You're, you're gonna, you, you are making plans decades down the road to what level you will have in, in terms of clean energy. Is there, is there a date that we're going to be done with fossil fuels as, as a way to, to produce, uh, generate electricity? Our, our clean energy plan has us eliminating coal as a fuel source by 2040, but we have a lot of reductions between here and there. That sounds like a long time. We'll have one plant remaining from 2031 to 2040, uh, but we're retiring the rest of our coal plants. Um, and I want to be um, very clear about something on the closure of those plants. In fact, I'm going up to one of our plants today. Uh, we're going to care for my coworkers during this transition. We're not going to um, ignore the fact that they have dedicated their lives and their professional careers to serving the people of Michigan by producing electricity. Coal has served this state extraordinarily well for a generation, two generations. It has fueled in our farms and our factories and our economy here in Michigan. We're transitioning, and as we transition, we will make sure that my coworkers are prepared for that transition. They're getting reskilled. We're actually uh, asking, and many of them are volunteering, to extend their employment so that they can stay to fulfill their duty at their site, uh, so that we don't have to hire someone new and have just three years under their belt, and then they have to learn a new skill. We can have our existing uh, team stay in place to, to complete the run at those facilities. Uh, and really do their part to make the transition possible. But we're going to do our part to make sure that those people, my coworkers, are cared for 
during this transition. Uh, the clean energy uh, resources, what we see uh, typically uh, the windmills, the, the solar panels, mm -hmm. The hydro dams, is that, is that mm -hmm. pretty much it? That's it. You know, and they do work. You know, they're important. We do have natural gas in our mix, and it's a, it has 50% the carbon emissions than a coal plant does. And so our plant right here in Jackson, the Jackson plant, is still part of our clean energy plan. It will be online for many, many, many years. And uh, it's an important part of the base load that makes sure that we have reliable energy delivery. We have here in Jackson some examples of um, not just uh, clean energy, but smart energy. And you were speaking at the, uh, the Christoph and Sons uh, tour and mentioned Jackson's number one. We're number two. Number two. Yes. But we're trying and harder. Yes, we're, we're working to be number one of small cities in America for the number of Energy Star buildings. So we are the second most energy really? efficient small town in America today. And we're working in Christoph and Sons project over at the old toy house uh, will be one more Energy Star building that goes into our uh, competitive ranking. And we are shooting for number one. Is smart energy uh, different than clean energy? Or how are they connected? That's a great question, Bart. So I would say uh, clean energy is when we produce energy, it's with carbon uh, less sources. Mm -hmm. So that's where renewable energy and hydropower are are really clean energy resources. Smart energy is not wasting it. So why produce a kilowatt that you're not actually gonna use? Mm -hmm. And I tell people the cleanest kilowatts are the ones that we never use because then you don't even have to produce anything uh, to fulfill it, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we reduce our peak demand, if we r eliminate energy waste across the system at our businesses and in our homes and in our schools, that's smart energy being fueled and powered then by clean energy. You typically um, bring gifts when you I have visit. a gift for you today. Well, I, I knew you were at Hinkley's earlier. Oh. I, was <laughs> I ate all those. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they didn't get it out of my car. <laughs> uh, but what I do have is something uh, maybe not as great as a Hinkley donut, for goodness sake. But it is our very own Love Michigan t-shirts that, let me tell you, these are very desirable commodities. This, I've seen several people wearing them already yeah, today. I have my Love Michigan shirt on. Brian and, Wheeler, uh, I think, has Brian has Wheeler on. has his yeah. Love Michigan shirt on. So you, Bart, can nice. be part of the Love Michigan Club. And this was designed by our very own Clay McAndrews. You wow. know, he's what such a he gift. Do? What can't he do? <laughs> We've got bright walls and t-shirts, really. And he has a job at Consumers. I'm not sure what he does there, but <laughs> he does a lot of cool things. <laughs> I'm not so sure he's actually doing Consumers work at Consumers. We're proud to call him our own. I'll take him however we can get him. He's awesome. So this tour includes uh, a luncheon, and um, it happened yesterday, but we're taping this interview before the luncheon. I see. So you've yes. got a whole room full of people, Jackson uh, business and community leaders. What's the what's the message you'll be delivering uh, today and then uh, throughout the, the seven city tour you're yeah. on? You know, the message is the time is now. I can't um, overstate really the seriousness of our opportunity. It's an opportunity of a generation mm -hmm. to have a dramatic impact on the planet. And the great news is we have a plan and a path that doesn't require sacrifice. It doesn't require a trade-off. It's just a trade-up to a cleaner, more energy efficient energy system. And we need everybody's help to make that true. And so it is serious because as I think about, and I imagine someday having, being in the garden with my yet unimagined granddaughter uh, and you know and her looking up at me as we're planting beans and everyone has long forgotten who Patty Poppy was and you know she says grandma what is climate change and I can look at her and say hmm something we used to worry about do you have a name picked out for your soon to be granddaughter well, I, I do but my daughters are offended <laughs> enough when I even mention my granddaughter that I think it's best I hold the name between Good idea. <laughs> <laughs> my daughters and I yeah all right uh, a dream for a uh, a world that uh, climate change is a is a memory that's right. right that's our dream thanks for being here thanks Bart consumers energy president and CEO Patty Poppy